Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Zilla Jackson back with another video. Let's go. So have you guys ever looked on the internet and you guys seen the a fight at the Waffle House or you've seen people steal food from McDonald's? <laughs> um or you've seen people crash to the roof through the CC through the CC TV cameras at McDonald's or wherever other fast food place that you could think of. Well, how about we look at the most dumbest crimes in fast food history? And it's a lot, bro. The internet's dumbest fast food history. Fast food crimes. By Wavy. I'm just gonna call him Wavy, bro. Stories of fast food can be frustrating. Yep. The internet is rife with stories of fast food controversy, be it reports of contaminated meals being served to customers, vile instances of employee misconduct, or videos showcasing psychotic customer meltdowns. There's something about fast food restaurants. It's like the most mind-boggling scenarios play out at these places. And the online world just can't seem to get enough of these tales. In this installment of Fast Food That's Disasters, we'll be looking at some of the most infamous fast food fiascos out there. And I couldn't think of a better place to start than the Wendy's gator throwing incident. Many of you watching may be familiar with them. That sounds like some Florida shit, bro. <laughs> that sounds like some... I'm from Florida. That sounds like some Florida shit. No cap. Bro, imagine imagine a gator being thrown at you in in McDonald's, bro. Imagine that. Imagine working at McDonald's and then somebody throws a, an alligator at you, bro. That's crazy. Nah, you got me fucked up. <laughs> hey, if I was working, if I was working that day, bro, I would take off. I would quit. I will quit that day. A mean-spirited prank that's often pulled on hapless fast food workers. That prank being fire in the hole. The act involves a delinquent fast food customer ordering a large soft drink at a drive through window only to then hurl the drink back at the restaurant worker, drenching the poor soul in the process. Sadly, fire in the hole has become a time-tested prank, popular for multiple generations of young people at this point. And unsurprisingly, dozens have actually been Hey, as an ex, I guess you could say a fast food worker because I worked at Domino's. As an ex fast food worker, bro, you're already in hell, bro. Like, you're already in hell. Because nine times out of ten, you don't want to be there. <laughs> nine times out of ten, you do not want to be there. It's too inconsistent, one, and then two, when everybody decides to order from the same place at the same time, then you're just way too busy, and it's like, what the fuck? At least be consistent. I'd probably rather work... Nah, I probably wouldn't rather work at a restaurant either. Mm -mm. A restaurant is probably worse than fast food, low-key. A restaurant, you have to go in and talk to people like people have to go in and talk to you face to face yeah no nah, i'm good i'm good been criminally prosecuted for performing this stunt but of the many disturbing examples of fire in the hole being performed no instance tops the time a live alligator was involved the story begins in october of Why, 2015 though? with 23 year old florida man joshua james joshua james had been described as florida, somewhat of an of outdoorsman course. a florida redneck with a penchant for animal wrestling Friends of the man say that Joshua recreationally caught snakes, lizards, and most importantly to this story, alligators. On one October day, Josh and a small group of associates managed to wrangle a gator, a young one, approximately gator. three and a half feet in length. Initially aggressive and thrashing, the wild reptile would eventually become docile, likely ex I mean, it ain't that long, but like at the same time, it's still a gator. It could still do some damage. And why? That's just annoying what the fuck exhausted from its fight with the florida men with a live gator now in their possession the boys begin to ask themselves what next fried gator a new pet release the poor thing 
none of the above. Joshua James and his friends, likely inspired by some of the viral fire in the hole videos on social media at the time, decided they'd put their own Florida spin on the already dangerous prank. They decided instead of throwing soda at a fast food employee, they would throw their live alligator into a drive through window. The story goes that Joshua and one of his gator wrangling accomplices would later pull up to the Wendy's drive through restaurant located in Royal Palm Beach, Florida. The men ordered a drink and then drove up to the drive through window to meet the unfortunate soul on the receiving end of their devious stunt. During the drive through interaction, the worker turned their back to the group and seeing their opportunity, Josh pulled the gator from the back seat of his truck and hurled the tormented reptile through the drive through window. The startled beast hissed as it landed inside Wendy, sending workers into a panic. The cashier was so terrified by the presence of the alligator, she jumped out of the drive through window as Josh sped away in his truck. The gate. Yeah, I'll quit, bro. I'll quit, bro. <laughs> Oh my gosh, bro. People are fucking stupid. I swear to God, people are so stupid. And I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be a mean spirited person. I'm trying to be as, how do I say it, as truthful as I can. Fucking idiot decided to put his own Floridian spin on an already dumbass fucking trend. That was on Facebook, Instagram, and probably Twitter and YouTube, of course. But like, why? Why? It's it, it, an alligator? Are you? F you must be at your monocle use, cause like, bro, what the fuck? Tripping tossing gang likely feeling that they'd committed the greatest act of fire in the hole in history and while this may be true the act would come with consequences as not only did josh and his friends harm the gator by throwing it they petrified everybody inside of the wendy's restaurant wendy's management would notify authorities over the gator inside of their facility it was later captured and released back into the wild by florida fish and wildlife conservation officers they traced the soft drink purchase at the time of the gator throwing back to Joshua James. After a thorough investigation, the man was arrested several months later. And you used your card? Oh my God, bro. Use your card too. You're fucking stupid. I've never heard of nobody more stupid than this dude, bro. What the hell? Oh, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna. Hold on. I'm gonna buy a drink so I can do this prank. And I'm gonna use my my debit card or my credit card. Of course, because that makes perfect sense. Is when is Wendy's like McDonald's where you can go go in and order any size drink for a dollar? Is it the same thing as McDonald's? I don't fucking know. He was taken into custody where he would confess to being the Wendy's gator thrower. As a result of his alligator antics, Joshua was facing some pretty serious charges. The most remarkable of these charges being aggravated assault with a deadly weapon with the intent to do less than murder and unlawful possession of a gator. After being arrested and charged, the man posted bail and was released from jail. Shortly after getting out, Joshua was approached by a group of journalists and he agreed to do an ad hoc interview with them. And the man was rather candid in the interview, saying that he didn't mean any harm by his stunt, he just wanted to do something funny. And he also claims that he had a friend that worked at the Wendy, so he thought it wouldn't be that big of a deal if he threw the gator in there. Well. You were wrong about that, pal. Yeah. So the person you threw it at was your friend or no? No, no, it was a different person. But I'm sure he's working there at the time and got a chance to see it. So. Do you have anything to say to the people at Wendy's? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry for what I did. 
mean, you know, just being stupid, not thinking, and obviously I found out what the consequences were, and I got to pay for Lucky, this sounds like the the average rat white boy that we all hear and talk about. Oh my god! For him, so. And so you never meant to harm anybody. You're saying? No, absolutely not. I never meant for anybody to get hurt or anything like that. You know, it was just it was a good laugh kind of thing. Yeah. In May of 2016, no, Joshua would plead guilty to his charges, which had been slightly softened. These charges included misdemeanor assault and unlawful possession of a gator. The man was given 12 months of probation and compelled to complete 75 hours of community service, and he had to pay a fine and court cost of $1,200. A Florida wildlife worker commented on the judge's sentencing. He may have thought this was something funny he was doing, but I've been bitten by alligators. I've seen what alligators can do, and I think that's probably something the judge took a look at. The gator tosser's disregard for public safety landed him a criminal record. Our next fast food disaster story involves another highly ignorant man. A man so dumb that he posted a video of himself committing a fast food related crime onto YouTube. When you're surfing the web, it's often common to see articles and videos showcasing secret menu items and menu hacks. One fast food hack out there is actually illegal to participate in, which brings us to the topic of the Del Taco scammer. Meet Robert Echeverria. Hold on, bro. Niggas are scamming Del Taco, bro. What the fuck? Like, how down bad do you gotta be to scam Del Taco? Matter of fact, to scam a fast food place, period, is crazy. Bro, oh, what the fuck? You're tripping. In 2008, Robert was featured in a rough shot video published to YouTube titled How to Scam Del Taco. This infamous video showcased Robert making a call to his local Del Taco restaurant wherein he attempts to trick the restaurant workers into giving him free food under the pretense that they had screwed up a previous order he had made, which he never actually made an order. Robert and his affiliates shot this video in the parking lot of the very Del Taco that they would wind up scamming. The act took place in Rialto, California, about 50 miles east of Los Angeles, and the man was aided by two friends, 18-year-old Ian Roman and 18-year-old Brian Fawcett. Rob's deceptive phone call ruse involved yeah. him telling a story where he claims that he sent his two sons to pick up Del Taco and that the restaurant had completely screwed up the order and put sour cream on everything. He claims that after getting this screwed up order, he called Del Taco corporate over the matter and was given the green light to get a free meal. How you doing, Rosie? My name's Robert Kennedy. I frequent your establishment about two to three times a week. Uh -huh. And I'm calling uh, about an incident that happened. Uh, early Wait, hold on. Before we, before we continue, this motherfucker looked like a roly-poly. I just couldn't get it out. This dude looked like... Gabriel Iglesias, if he had actually grown out facial hair, bro. This dude looked like Fat Joe if Fat Joe never got big, bro. <laughs> bro, I just can't, bro. This motherfucker really does look like he could really collapse within two steps, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. I challenge you. Run to the light pulse and back, bro. I'll give you I'll give you two Big Macs. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so mean spirited. That was so mean spirited. I apologize for that one, but like God dang, bro. The fuck? Earlier I talked to the manager. Uh they were getting they were getting off at the time. They Fucking told me to ass. call in uh when I got home from work. Basically what happened was I sent my son Isaiah and and my son Cody in for um, not a substantial amount of food, but for a good amount of food. And when it when the food came back, I told them to take it back. They had no receipt from the order, and the order contained 
sour cream and I don't eat sour cream and at the same time our sodas were wrong and when I called I actually called corporate corporate told me to call the manager and that they will fix it so that's what I'm basically calling for it seems like Rob has like rehearsed this story like you got to wonder how many times he's pulled this stunt now when it had become clear that the restaurant workers were buying his tall tail he would send Ian and Brian inside to pick up their free meal under the guise of them being his sons the two 18 year olds would go in and pick up the fraudulent spread the Del Taco evac was caught on camera by Rob's gang of scammers. Rob's minions would then return to his vehicle with a bag filled to the brim of Del Taco. The Tex-Mex kingpin could be seen braggadociously munching his spoils as the video comes to a close. The Del Taco scam was a complete success. Rob's Del Taco scam tutorial video was uploaded to YouTube on February 22nd of 2008 to the Nickel and Dime YouTube channel. Opinions from... I mean, you're a dumbass first of all if you're gonna scam somebody why would you post it on the internet where the whole world can see I and mean, you did it with the title where you did it with a title a title where people would click on it and you had thousands of views you don't think nobody would have saw that bro you're a fucking idiot from the public would quickly flood into its comment section with many praising rob for his elaborate scheme while others warned him of potential del taco retribution this guy is a good con man the simple details he adds really makes it more believable the son's name saying he has salmonella etc that seems like quite a lot of effort to go through to avoid paying even a few bucks for a few tacos right. using del taco's kindness against them this is what makes the world a colder and less kind place. I hope this guy pays the maximum price under the law for this. He's a true jerk. Clever social engineering tactic. I don't think this was a good idea in any way, but I'll give the dude credit. He's a good talker. I frequent your establishment two to three times a week. Yeah, right. Looks more like 23 times a week. If this guy needs anything, it's not Del Taco. In the early days of YouTube, the Del Taco- Motherfucker needs a salad. <laughs> A salad. But who am I to talk, bro? I'm still big. Why am I yawning so much? Because I woke up at 3 o'clock. No, I didn't wake up. I stayed up at 3 o'clock to watch the LGS tournament. And as I stayed up and stayed awake at 3 o'clock, I didn't fall asleep until 5 o'clock. Because the tournament ran for so long. And it didn't stop until 3 p.m. So I'm still tired. <laughs> I'm still tired. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to record like one more video right after this one. And then I'm going to sleep. Nothing. Catch round two of this tournament. El Taco scam video was truly one of a kind and it went viral, amassing tens and eventually hundreds of thousands of views. Unfortunately for Rob though, this attention meant that the Del Taco scam video would eventually make it back to Del Taco themselves. Perhaps with YouTube being so niche at the time, Rob never expected his fast food victim to find the video. For this naivety, he would be punished severely. Apparently, a viewer who knew Rob in real life recognized him in the video and called police over the matter, reporting his fraudulent activity to authorities. With all the evidence they needed publicly viewable on YouTube, they promptly tracked the man down and arrested Rob. This obese fraudster was hit with a felony commercial burglary charge and- Damn, I say he looked like a roly-poly too, bro. I didn't actually think that he was gonna look like a roly-poly. placed on a $125,000 bond. Police had this to say about Rob after he was arrested and put in jail. He was quite proud of himself there in the video, but he cried like a big baby back here. Both Brian Fawcett and Ian Hobbs were also arrested due to their connection with the Del Taco scam. In March of 2008, Robert would plead guilty and was sentenced to serve 30 days in jail along with three years of probation and was completely banned from the Rialto Del Taco. After the conclusion of the case, the district attorney commented, that's light, bro. 
That's light, bro. What the? F 10 days? And it's not like it's prison. It's jail. Prison is a whole different story. Prison is where the convicted convicts go. The ones that, like, not it's not the ones that do petty crimes. The petty crimes where you go to jail for. I'm talking about the murderers, the 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 SAers. You got yeah, bro. All those severe crimes. That's where prison people go. But we're talking about jail. The county jail. That means you're just locked up in a cell surrounded by police officers. Whatever, I guess. Did I tried to get him to stay away from all Del Tacos, but the judge said just the one. As for Ian and Brian, unfortunately, I'm unable to ascertain exactly what their sentences were, but I would imagine it was less than Rob the Kingpin. Recording yourself scamming Del Taco is pretty stupid, but Rob has nothing on our next guy, an individual that went to jail over cold fries from McDonald's. Before we get into our next story, a brief word. Oh, I gotta skip this because uh, I'm not getting paid for it. Sorry, my boy. But. Nigga. Nigga killed somebody? He committed murder? He committed murder over some french fries. Why? Over some french fries, bro? Bro, you could... Life is too short to be mad over some french fries. If they cold, you can literally go home you can literally go home, pop on the air fryer for about like a minute and a half or like some amount of time, maybe put some cheese on it, some bacon. But yeah, bro, you, man, over some french fries, bro, you tripping. When a fast food joint gets your order wrong, it can be frustrating. Oh, but it's not the end of the world. The in cost. light of a screw-up, oh, most people God. ask the restaurant for a refund or simply wait around for them to remake the order correctly. However, there does exist a small cohort of individuals that have reacted disproportionately to a restaurant getting their order wrong, such as the folks who have called police over mismatched items in their bags. And what did the owner say to you? Well, I, I ordered a chicken sandwich, and this, uh, basically the owner, I told him right before I ordered a can of tomatoes because I'm allergic. It goes without saying that it takes a room temperature IQ to think it's worth calling the police over a fast food order. But you know what's even more outrageously stupid? Doing this while you have an active warrant out for your arrest. Meet twenty. You gotta warn out for your arrest, bro. You make a complaint about McDonald's. I mean, after making the complaint about McDonald's, the cops come out and arrest you. Fuck me, bro. Swear, bro. Say, say, swear, bro. You're dumb as fuck. 24-year-old Antoine Sims. In August of 2022, Mr. Sims would enter and place an order at a kennel. And this is recent too. And it's in Alabama. It's in Alabama. Of course, it's in Alabama, bro. Dude's probably from Birmingham too. He's probably from Birmingham. 
Hey, hey, don't diss on Birmingham. Birmingham has still got the got top. I mean, like top crime, bro. I'm not gonna look it up. I'm not gonna look it up. I saw Georgia McDonald's location. This okay, man, who was said to have been with his fiance at the time, found himself becoming frustrated at the length of time it was taking the employees to prepare his food. Nearly 10 minutes had passed and Sims was still waiting. The man eventually snapped, and with no receipt in hand, he questioned the cashier what was taking so long. Well, it turns out that Antoine Sims' order number had already been called, and he didn't notice it because he didn't have his receipt. His food was ready and had been sitting out, ready to be picked up for several minutes at this point. After this, <sighs> that egg is just stupid, bro. You didn't check the receipt number before you tossed a bit? Stupid. Just stupid, bro. I've never heard of something more stupid in my life. Just stupid. No, I don't, I'm, no. No, stupid. And that was, that was all right for you to get arrested for? Stupid this discovery the man would inspect his meal only to find that his french fries had become cold enraged by this development sims was said to have furiously demanded staff to make him some fresh french fries the man has been quoted as saying this to management quote you better give me some fucking french fries mother fucker. This situation was said to have escalated into a physical altercation with Antoine Sims allegedly throwing his food and drink at the McDonald's manager. Due to Mr. Sims' aggressive action, the incensed man was kicked out of the store by the McDonald's team, and he was told to never return. Antoine Sims was livid after being thrown out of the establishment, and in his rage, he decides to make a phone call. The vengeful man found it prudent to dial 911 and explained to authorities that McDonald's was refusing to supply him with a fresh order of french fries. Basically, Brody was a... Brody was a... Whatchamacallit? What do you call it? Brody was a Karen. Was a black version of a Karen. And he got arrested for it. <laughs> this is fucking stupid as fuck, bro. But you can reheat the french fries, bro. You can literally reheat the french fries. You can reheat. And it's 2022, bro. So it's fairly recent. This is still, still COVID era. But this is still fairly recent at the same time. I know good and well that you have an air fryer. If not, you have an oven. You gotta have either an air fryer or oven at that point, bro. It's like, bro, what? I don't know, bro. After much haranguing, dispatch would eventually capitulate and send officers to the scene to investigate this french fry fiasco. A short time later, officers would arrive at McDonald's and police body cam footage would record Antoine detailing his dilemma. I guess our order was called, but we don't even know our order number. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So now our food is sitting there cold. So when I come up, I say, you know, I try to fry the fries. Or they're lukewarm, but they're not hot. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I just ask him, can we get some fresh, fresh fry? Okay. He said, okay, the fries are not hot. Touch the fries. I said, no, they're not hot. And at this point, you don't touch them. So, you know, yeah, yeah can I just get a fresh set? Okay. So is he getting the fries? And I said, can I also get the receipt? That was five minutes ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, excuse me, sir. Five minutes ago, I can, I can run my store however I want to run my store this now sir i didn't pay he said matter of fact you can leave my property get off my property now the ever so patient police collected his first and last name then they entered the restaurant to speak with the mcdonald's franchise owner the mcdonald's workers would point out that antoine was the aggressor and the owner of the restaurant would also point out that he noticed a probation anklet on antoine's leg uh, basically suggesting
Dude, you know you could have also went to another McDonald's, right? Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. How many McDonald's are there in the U.S., bro? There are 13... Point five K thirteen point five K McDonald's in the United States. And that's in literally a week ago. Literally a week ago. July fourth, Tuesday. It was about a week and two days ago. A week and two days ago, it's okay. Uh, in the US in 2022, in 2022, there were 13,444 McDonald's in the United States. And you couldn't have went to a whole nother McDonald's. They probably wouldn't have even known that you went out of the house while you were on house arrest. You fucking dumbass. Testing that he thought the man was out on probation. He insists that he's all his food is cold. Okay. He's burning my hands. So whatever. That's okay. you know not. After speaking with the owner, it seemed as if police thought that McDonald's was in the right in this situation. The officer would then reapproach Mr. Sims and inform him that he was no longer allowed to go into the restaurant and asked him if he would be willing to sign an acknowledgement form stating such. Still hung up on getting new french fries, Mr. Sims wasn't thrilled about the development but kind of played ball for the time being. He does not want you coming back in the store. He actually wants us to come and trespass you. So you will not be allowed back at this no, McDonald's. I don't even stay here. I keep. It doesn't matter. He's requested it. We got to do it. It's not a big deal. It's so a you piece have of. To charge me? No, we're not charging you. It's a piece of paper we're going to give you that's going to say, hey, you can't come back to this McDonald's. That's all it is. Wow. Like, yeah. No, just, like, just realistically, did I do anything? I don't know. I, I'm not here to even figure that out. I'm here to, I'm here to keep the peace. Now, at this point, the officer would go back to his police cruiser to get that acknowledgement for him that he mentioned. But while inside his car, he decided to do a little bit of investigation about the theory that Antoine Sims was a man on probation. He runs his name through the police database. And after running Antoine's name through his police cruiser computer, the officer was stunned to discover that the man had an act warrant out for his arrest. Turns out Antoine Sims had been arrested back in 2018. The man was suspected of being connected to the murder of a woman named Adeliza Mertovic. This woman was thought to have been accidentally killed in a botched drug deal and prosecutors were alleging Antoine Sims of assisting the perpetrators in hiding evidence of the crime. Apparently, Antoine had missed a court date pertaining to this case while he was out on bond. Because of this, a warrant was put out for his arrest. The officer, who at this point was just stunned at the audacity of someone calling the police over something so petty with an active warrant, decided to play it cool and call for backup. He gets the That bruh is really wanted for murder. Or wanted for involvement of murder. But instead of letting it go, 
he calls the police for petty as reasons. Misses his court date. And fucking, oh my gosh, bro. I swear people are. Oh my god, bro. I can't, bro. I literally can't. I don't. Mm. The acknowledgement form goes back to Antoine with the intent of making an arrest. When the officer returned, he handed Antoine the acknowledgement form. The police commenced small talk, trying not to alert the man of his imminent arrest. Soon, additional officers would arrive, and at this point, Antoine Sims began to grow visibly paranoid. Seeing the situation deteriorating, police would go for an arrest, He's and it's run. at this point that Antoine Get him. runs for it. Hey, come over here, man. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> Why are you afraid? <laughs> He's gonna run. Get him. Okay, I'm afraid. All right, I'm I'm gonna walk you I'm, through. I'm, Why are you I'm, doing that? I know how to fill it out. Why are you doing that? I know how to fill. Am I All right? Yeah. No, let's make it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way that he falls. There's no way that the cop falls. No way the cop falls while trying to arrest, like, trying to go on the police chase, bro. There's no way he falls, bro. That's, that's hilarious. That's funny to me, bro. Car, 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 car. The fleet-footed French fry complaint. That motherfucker fell and he said, fuck that, I'm getting in the car. <laughs> Plaintant ran from police for some time and even allegedly attempted to break into an apartment building during the pursuit. But eventually, officers tracked Antoine Sims down, tased the man, and took him into custody. After arresting Sims, police would search his vehicle that he rode to McDonald's in and discovered 31 grams of marijuana. So in addition to being in trouble for skipping court, he now had an additional charge of possession with intent to distribute. Antoine Sims is now back in jail and awaits court relating to his alleged involvement in the death of Adeliza Mertovic. I'll end this segment with a YouTube comment under the police activity video showcasing the body cam footage of Antoine's arrest, which I think very well sums up the man's intelligence. This guy has the reasoning capabilities of a chicken McNugget. Enough said. Calling the cops over some cold french fries while you have an active warrant for your arrest is absurdly stupid. Antoine Sims would fit right in with our next harebrained fool caught up in a fast food disaster. That being the man who tried to impersonate In-N-Out Burger's CEO and got sued for it in civil court. In March of 2018, a man... I take... I live in California, right? Obviously, there is California chains that that we all or majority of people like i honestly think that in and out is mid hold on before y'all cook me in the comments okay i came from the south okay and what we had in the south was whataburger okay i think whataburger is tremendously better than in and out but 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 i'm not saying that it's not it doesn't hit on those days but it hits on those days i'm saying that it is mid if you don't get there where the line is long if you get there when the line is long it's over if you get there when a line is the like there's only like two cars in front of you perfect it's exquisite i ain't gonna lie you get your famished your famished stomach your famished stomach full but otherwise i think it's mid hot take you can flame me as however you want but <laughs> 
I do not give two fucks. <laughs> and donning a suit, entered an in and out burger establishment in San Fernando Valley, California. Introducing himself by the name John Trollston, the sharply dressed man presented himself as the CEO of the company itself. Trollston claimed that he needed a burger and fry meal from the restaurant so that he could audit the place's quality and make sure that it was up to in and out standards. Some of the employees at the restaurant took the bait and gave the man food, but the obvious prank attempt at hand was caught on quickly by one of the managers, who denied John Trollston the attention he was seeking. See, it turns out Mr. Trollston was actually an online prankster named Cody Roeder. Roeder had already successfully perpetrated a similar prank which was recorded in public to his YouTube channel, Troll Munchies. Seeing through Mr. Trollston's ruse, the manager at this in and out establishment would call police over the matter. Upon realizing the police had been alerted, Cody, aka John Trollston, hastily fled the restaurant and managed to escape the scene before the cops arrived. However, despite narrowly evading police confrontation, this wouldn't be the end of John Trollston's in and out CEO impersonation antics. Cody would continue this same half-wit prank, hitting another In-N-Out location in Burbank, California, claiming that he was the CEO in an attempt to get free food. In the Burbank attempt, he goes as far as making a public scene by stepping on a burger in front of the restaurant's manager and customers. Who the fuck you think you are, Gordon Ramsay? Tripping. <laughs> You're fucking tripping, bro. You're a prankster YouTuber, bro. You, your whole channel base is dead, bro. At this point, I, I, I really should have been paying attention when they said what year it was, but honestly, it doesn't fucking matter, bro. It, it it doesn't fucking matter. You're just a fucking idiot altogether. I think at this point your channel was already dying in the first place. And then you fucking did this stupid ass shit and now your channel's fully dead because you went to jail. Dumbass. <laughs> sir, sir, uh I hate to say this, hey, but man, I need your food I'm gonna I'm gonna your burger. Sir, I need you to leave now. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's he would avoid police incursion in this situation as well, and his videos continued to go up showcasing him pranking in and out restaurants. But this Burbank incident would prove to be the last straw for in and out Apparently, prank channels had been swarming the areas and these in and out restaurants around Los Angeles for some time, with many customers and employees complaining to the company about being filmed by opportunistic trolls and influencers who would visit their restaurants. As a result of Cody Roeder's in and out Burger CEO impersonation pranks, Cody was sued by the company. Their lawsuit demanding that Cody be banned from in and out Burger establishments, that he pay them $25,000 in damages, and requested a restraining order be issued against the man that if violated would incur $1,000 of damages for each infringement. While the Damn. Because you were a dumbass. Now you're never allowed to be at another in and out ever again. <laughs> you can never be at an in and out ever again. And you have to pay what, 25,000 or 2,500, something like that. Something like that. Either way, he has to pay a good lump sum of money that he's getting out of his non existent YouTube paycheck. Um, I'm sorry. It just kind of pissed me off. I mean, like there was no prank YouTuber back in the day that I actually was like, I actually liked, except for P2 is a name and young Don, not young Don, uh, Don the Mamba Atlas, which they both stopped doing prank shit, bro. <laughs> it, it just... I don't know. It's just pranks are stupid at this point. Pranks are stupid because you can fake them because people start doing fake pranks. But you want to, I don't know, bro. I'm just going to continue, bro, because I ran out of shit to say.
outcome of this lawsuit isn't public, videos related to in and out Burger were removed from the Troll Muncie's channel, so I can only imagine that the lawsuit had legs to some degree. <sighs> In what's likely one of the most disturbing crimes in the history of fast food, we now get to our final McDonald's fast food search. disaster. The story of the McDonald's strip search hoax. It's an incident involving a deeply unsettling crime that affected an 18 year old employee. A crime that was facilitated due to the incompetence and negligence showcased by her management. On April 9, oh. 2004, at a McDonald's location in Mount Washington, Kentucky, assistant manager Donna Kentucky. Summers was working her shift when she got a phone call in her back office. Summers picked up the phone, and to the woman's surprise, the man on the line identified himself as a police officer, a man going by the name Officer Scott. Officer Scott promptly informed the assistant manager that one of her employees, 18-year-old Louise Ogborn, was reported to police by a customer who claimed that Louise had stolen money from them at the restaurant. As a part of this policeman's investigation, the officer requested assistant manager Donna Summers to bring Louise to the manager's office and perform a search of the employee under the premise of finding this allegedly stolen money. Donna Summers was initially skeptical at the claims made by the officer. However, the man on the phone was able to accurately describe Louise's physical appearance, and the man was able to put together a believable story that Donna Summers eventually believed to be legitimate. Under the assumption that she was aiding in a legit police investigation, while still on the phone with the officer, Donna summoned Louise to her office. And from here, things take a bizarre dark turn. After Louise was in the office with Summers, Officer Scott ordered Donna Summers to perform a strip search on the employee. Under guidance from this disembodied authority figure, the assistant manager meticulously Bro, that's sick, bro. Motherfucker probably tapped into the cameras and he just wanted to see a girl get naked, bro. That's sick, bro. You know there's free sites for that, bro. Especially at this time, there was still free sites. Not covering my mic. Um, there was there was free sites, and you had it. No, nah, bro, that's weird. Lastly, searched the clothing of Louise to the point where the only article of clothing worn by the woman was a restaurant apron. Nothing had been found on Louise throughout this meticulous search. In hindsight, it's clear that something unusual was going down here, but Donna Summers didn't necessarily see a problem with this very particular search that the officer was ordering her to do. After about 30 minutes into the search... Ain't that against the law, though? Your managers cannot strip you. They can't. No, they can't. Even if you are stealing, they can't strip you. They have to go under investigation like the whole store has to go under investigation then you have to go through the investigation then if you actually are proven to be guilty then you will be arrested and will be banned from the establishment right or am i wrong i don't know um y'all let me let y'all let me know in the comments Search with Officer Scott requesting more interrogation done on the woman, Donna Summers would apparently express that this investigation was taking too much of her time and was interfering with operations of the restaurant. The assistant manager would then leave the room and pass the phone along to another employee, 27 year old Jason Bradley. Bradley was tasked with watching the accused Louise Ogborn until Donna Summers could return. Jason Bradley, now at the helm of the phone, began speaking with this alleged policeman. In subsequent interviews performed with Jason Bradley after this incident, the man claims that he felt that something was suspicious about the legitimacy of the officer on the line. 18 year old Louise was terrified at this point, almost naked, and had been thoroughly searched with nothing found. The man thought, she why was wasn't the fully officer? physically present if this was such a big deal however despite right. his suspicions jason bradley would keep the phone line open with officer scott after engaging in small talk with officer scott sometime later manager donna summers would return to inform those in the office of a rather unusual plan of action that was to take place she informed everybody in the office that since the restaurant was so poorly staffed and that they were busy and couldn't really handle this on their own that she had called her fiance a man named walter nix and this why would you do that 
Call the actual police. If there's actually a situation like that, the police should be present. Oh my god, bro. Oh my gosh, bro. Bro, the the fucking two white people right there are more stupid than the fucking black dude that we saw that was stupid enough to call him call call the police on McDonald's while he had a warrant that was for arrest. Like, bro, come on. Man would be coming to the restaurant to aid in the interrogation of Louise Ogborn. Walter Nix was not a McDonald's employee and by no means should have been involved in this situation. But what becomes apparent as this story progresses is that Louise's management and her fellow McDonald's employees were deeply incompetent. After all, nobody had taken any action or raised an eyebrow at the concerning path that this bizarre investigation had gone down. An investigation being helmed by an officer that none of them had met. And sadly, Summer's boyfriend, Walter Nix's involvement in this situation, would cause the entire McDonald's strip search incident to become far darker. Walter Nix. Oh my God, I feel like I know where this is heading. Please don't tell me it's heading to that route, bro. I feel like she's about to get R worded. It's just something that's like it's like a tingle right now. It's like a tingle in my in my in the back of my skull. And she's like, no. No, no, no. Ivan man the phone sometime later. And what follows is two hours of Nick's taking orders from Officer Scott on the phone. Orders that led to unspeakable abuse against Louise, including but not limited to sexual assault. The terrified woman feeling compelled to stay and endure this treatment under fear of getting in trouble with police. After being assaulted under orders from Officer Scott, Walter Nix would leave the room, and Assistant Manager Donna Summers would then send in staff custodian 58 year old tom sims to speak with the police officer thankfully mr sims would be the man to break the chain of abuse that was occurring against this poor employee upon manning the phones officer scott then instructed custodian sims to remove louise's apron the custodian, who was already confused by the situation at hand, became extremely concerned upon hearing this request and felt that his fellow employees had played into the hands of some sort of twisted deviant, posing as an officer. The custodian immediately got assistant manager Donna Summers What the fuck, bro? What the fuck, bro? You got the fucking four stooges. The four stooges, bro. Like, the second dude, he said that he had, like, a, had that tingle, right? He had that, he had that little, that little thing that said, that was in his brain that said, this ain't right. But he still said, fuck it, why not? I'm just going to watch her until the manager comes back, which is the first person that fucking... Where are my glasses? You know what? This this is a perfect time for my glasses because we need to analyze the bullshit that, that has occurred, bro. Because, like, my brain is going through a loop right now. I don't understand how can you be so stupid and out of your brain, out of your fucking makta that you fucking do this shit. For this long. You let that happen for that long? Why? And explained to her that they had likely just been duped, asserting that Officer Scott was a fraud and his call was a hoax. 
It would be at this moment that Officer Scott would end the phone call. After this development, Donna had finally come to the same disturbing realization that Custodian Sims had. The employees had assisted some freak out there in abusing Louise. McDonald's upper management were soon notified about the situation, and it wouldn't be long until police would arrive as well. A criminal investigation and inquiry was launched into the abuse of Louise Ogborn, and authorities sought out to find the man that made the Officer Scott phone call. What Donna Summers and her employees didn't realize at the time of this incident taking place was that there was a serial hoax caller on the loose. An unknown man had been making threatening phone calls all around the U.S. to individuals and businesses impersonating authority figures and using blackmail to compel workers to perform sadistic acts that fulfilled his own sexual fantasies, most of which targeted fast food restaurants or retail stores. And after a long investigation, police would would name a suspect. The man behind the McDonald's strip search call and many others was alleged by police to be 38-year-old David R. Stewart, a Walmart security guard. Hey, you look like a kinky ass motherfucker, bro. <laughs> you look like a kinky ass motherfucker, bro. You look fucking... I don't know, bro. Like, this is... I'm not even mad at the dude anymore, bro. I'm just like disappointed in the people that actually that that were stupid enough to let it go on for so long. Are y'all that stupid that y'all? No, I'm not even going go into the same rant again, bro. Like y'all just fucking stupid as hell. I hope y'all all lose y'all jobs, and that's something I should not say as a Christian. But like, bro. I wish you peace and prosperity in all your next comings, in your next comings, but uh, clearly that's not the job for you, <laughs> ma'am, sir, and all, all you guys other. And I hope the victim actually gets paid out millions by corporate because of something that you guys have done, because uh, you guys are really not bright from Panama City, Florida. According to police, David R. Stewart was found to have been in the possession of phone cards associated with call log data from the aforementioned abuse hoax calls, and police had surveillance footage of Stewart purchasing these very cards. As a result of what happened to Louise at McDonald's in Mount Washington, Kentucky, David Stewart was arrested on June 30th of 2004 and was charged with impersonating a police officer and solicitation of sodomy. Walter Nix, Louise's most serious in-person abuser, was brought in on charges of sodomy and assault. The man would later be found guilty and sentenced to serve five years in prison. Donna Summers, whose negligence helped facilitate the abuse of Louise, was convicted on misdemeanor charges and was sentenced to serve a year of probation. And what would become of David Stewart? the man alleged to have been behind this hoax call. Well, David Stewart was facing up to 15 years in prison. Hold on, give me a second. Rewind that. and was charged with impersonating a police officer and solicitation of sodomy. Walter Nix, Louise's most serious in-person abuser, was brought in on charges of sodomy and assault. The man would later be found guilty and sentenced to serve five years in prison. Just five? Just five? And then she gets one year of probation. Donna Summers, whose negligence helped facilitate the abuse of Louise, was convicted on misdemeanor charges and was sentenced to serve a year of probation. And what would become of David Stewart, the man alleged to have been behind this hoax call? Well, David Stewart was facing up to 15 years in prison for his alleged crimes. But during trial, the prosecution Jesus failed Christ. to provide any direct evidence proving David was the voice in the hoax call. As sadly, despite there being video recording from inside the McDonald's, the camera did not capture audio, nor was the phone call recorded in any other way. While police had connected him to the purchasing of phone cards related to hoax calls, the proof was only circumstantial in relation to the McDonald's case. Because of this, the jury did not find the man guilty, and he was acquitted of any criminal wrongdoing.
Curiously, hoax calls of this sort completely stopped afterwards. The accused man has never spent a day in prison stemming from this incident despite evidence linking him to the crime, and he maintains a clean criminal record. As for Louise, the tragic victim of the McDonald's hoax call, in 2007, she would file a massive lawsuit against McDonald's, asking for $200 million in damages. Attorney That makes sense, but two two hundred two hundred million. Two yeah, yeah, it is a multi million dollar company though. I don't know. It only reason why I'm actually like so amped up about this, cause like, you know, I'm getting older. I'm twenty one. I'm twenty one, I'm getting older. And, you know, I I tend to be on the mature side because I was the only child on my mama's side of the family. On my dad's side, I'm the oldest of five. I'm the oldest of five. So I'm thinking it I'm thinking it more mature like. And I'm just imagining if that was my child. If that was my child. If I was forty years old and my child is twenty and working as hard as they can and doing the right thing and i know they're doing the right thing that does not make fucking sense and i wonder if this manager lady ever fucking took the time to think does this really make fucking sense And then she called her husband. And I wonder if he asked himself why? Like, oh, I wonder if he asked, he asked himself or even if he said to himself that makes no fucking sense because it makes no fucking sense. I should not be involved. The more the the involvement that I should have is be like, hey babe, that was work today. Oh, uh, this happened. This happened. This happened. What the fuck? Yeah, the strip search. One of your coworkers. You know that's 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 the only involvement that I should have. But like you're tripping. Tripping, massive bro. lawsuit against McDonald's asking for $200 million in damages. Attorneys for McDonald's claim that the blame mostly belonged to Donna Summers for not recognizing the hoax and not the greater company. But in the end, they were found liable. Ultimately, Louise was awarded $1.1 million in punitive damages resulting from this case. And Still bizarrely enough, awesome. Donna Summers, the assistant manager, was awarded $400,000 herself in a separate civil suit filed against McDonald's. The premise of the case stating that McDonald's failed... Ow! She should get nothing. She should be fired. How? management by not informing them of the threat of hoax callers at the time. It's extremely frustrating that whoever was behind this call was never caught and brought to justice. And in all honesty, if you ask me, Louise should have got way more money than what she got from these McDonald's lawsuits. The legacy of this case is deeply unsettling to say the least. In my opinion, this is likely the most disturbing fast food disaster in history and will live on as a cautionary tale showcasing the abuse of authority figures and why one should always be weary when communicating with someone under anonymity. And well, you made it to the end. Let me know what you guys thought about the video down below in the comment section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace. That was a whole lot of bullshit that, that we have uh, accumulated into our brains for today. Which one, which one really fucked y'all up? Which one is the one that y'all said was the most stupidest thing 
out of all that situ out of all those situations, which one was the most dumbest outlandish thing that y'all could think of? Type it in the comments. The video will be in a link in the description. The the uh the creator's link will be in the description and social's link will be in the description. Uh with that said, you guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your days. Stay safe out there. If you guys are in the fast food industry, look out. Um and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your days. Peace. Because we all fucking need it.